The Behind Ears podcast crew would like to thank the following sponsors for their generous support. If you have a little one and you're going to Walt Disney World, you're going to need a stroller. I'll tell you what, kingdomstrollers.com is the place where you want to look into. I'll tell you, you know, I've destroyed my fair share of strollers while, while at Walt Disney World, and those things are not cheap. But getting something from kingdomstrollers.com, they'll be able to help you pick out the perfect stroller for you. And the nice part is, is that because they're a Disney preferred provider, they'll be able to drop it off and pick it up right from your Disney resort at no extra charge. So if you don't want to necessarily destroy your stroller in the process and you want to have a great Disney vacation with your little one, contact kingdomstrollers.com and they'll set you right up. That's kingdomstrollers.com. Do you want to save around 40% off Disney's prices for deluxe on-property accommodations? Contact dvc-rental.com. They help out Disney Vacation Club owners rent out points that they're not going to use. These points mean savings for you on your next trip at Walt Disney World, Disneyland, Vero Beach, Florida, and Hilton Head Island in South Carolina. The DVC member books everything in your name, just like any other reservation. And if you ever decide that you want to become a DVC member, you can check out our sister company, BuyAndSellDVC.com. As a licensed realtor, they sell DVC contracts for members at a savings of 30 to 40% off Disney's prices. And if you're looking to sell your contract, BuyAndSellDVC.com has one of the industry's lowest commissions at only 6.5%. Again, that's DVC-Rental.com for your rental needs and BuyAndSellDVC.com to buy or sell into the Disney Vacation Club at a large discount. And make sure you tell them that the Behind Ears podcast crew sent you. A new coffee for Expedition Roasters, Curacao and Curacao. This tag says drink me for a Wonderland coffee crumb cake experience. Oh my, I feel so exhilarated. And look at all of these other handcrafted themed coffees and teas they have. It's like falling down a rabbit hole into the most wonderful coffee and tea party. Now you better hurry, you don't want to be late. So head over to expeditionroasters.com to brew a little magic at your home. Behind the Ears podcast listeners, be sure to use code EARS20 for 20% off your next purchase with us. Brew your happy place. Coming to you live from our studios on the East Coast and in the Midwest, it's the Behind the Ears podcast, because everybody does Disney differently. I'm Uncle Danny. That is Mr. Chris. This is Behind the Ears Podcast. We go live here on Facebook and YouTube. Right, YouTube? We're still doing that? Yeah, okay, well. Every uh, Tuesday and Thursday at 9.45 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so, once again, Mr. Chris, how are you? Hey, I'm doing super. How are you today on this very happy birthday to you? Oh, well, I do appreciate that, and I do appreciate everybody who has reached out to me uh, throughout the day, either Facebook, Instagram, text messages, whatever it is. I do uh, truly appreciate all of it. Um, it was a, it was an absolute pleasure being able to be, uh, you know, so many people reaching out to me, so I do thank you. So I see we have an exciting show on tonight that has to somewhat do with me, I feel like it was like a backhanded compliment. Oh no, 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 no! Oh no, 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 no! Not at all. I mean, <clears throat> it was not a backhanded compliment. I mean, I mean, I know that uh, <laughs> it's just backhanded at that point. Oh no, no, not even backhanded. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that, uh, um, you know, the funny part is, is that you know, a few days ago, you put up on the WDW community page the idea of you know, hey, how long is it into your trip? And there were a number of people that basically sounds like they're going around the same time as you are. And I kind of thought, you know, it would be kind of fun to touch on the topic of stress packing or stress while packing. I mean, the the funny part about it is you're always, well, you always look like you're cool as a cucumber, even though you have got so much going on right now in your life and yet you are still managing to go to Walt Disney World this coming Sunday and I, I don't know and how I'm not you, finished back by the way I don't know how you do it that's just the thing I don't know how you're gonna do it. I mean, even Mary says right here packing is a pain 
I, I'm on that end. And I thought we yeah, would... I think unpacking is worse than packing. Unpacking? Ugh. Yeah. Why, why do you say that? Just out of curiosity. Because when you come home from work, the la- I mean, from work, when you come home from vacation, the last thing you want to deal with is taking out all your dirty clothes and washing them, putting them away, doing this, doing that. Packing is not bad because packing, it's stressful, but at the same time, you know there's a trip in front of you. You're getting excited. You're like, oh, I get to wear this at this park, this at that park. When you come home, it's like, oh, yeah, I got bills. (laughs) What do you mean I got to mow the lawn? (laughs) That's why I hate going on cruises. I love them to death, but it stinks when you come home and you're like, wait, that orange juice is not free? What, what, What do you mean I can't have nine lobsters for the price of zero? And that's that's where I'm at. Uh, you know, I I could under I can understand that. I mean, my whole take on it is, and we could touch on this. You're obviously a packer, and you don't do any sort of laundry while you're there. So we actually do because we usually hang out at the pool near the laundry. Because my wife found out ever since we became DVC members and got spoiled with like one or two bedroom villas, mm-hmm. doing laundry in the room at night is not that big of a deal and you get to pack a lot less and your luggage doesn't smell like butt on the way home. <laughs> I'm sorry if that's very, I'm sorry if anybody's eating dinner while you're listening to that. So you got to throw some of those little like trees in there, like the little uh, air freshener. Trees. Oh my gosh. So everything smells like a New York city taxi cab. I don't think so. Pal. <laughs> hey, how dare you speak about my people? Uh, so, I mean, one of the, I mean, it's kind of interesting. I mean, you obviously haven't, you haven't packed yet. I know you haven't packed yet. I'm like 80% of the way packed. Now, do you plan on shipping your luggage down? So I missed the window <laughs> where I can save a ton of money. So it actually is more expensive for me to ship it down now. So I'm just going to bring it on the plane with me. Oh, boy. Okay. So, like, you're going to take it. Are you going to check it? Or are you going to, like, like check it. no yeah i have to i mean we're we're there for eight days so you know we need 10 days worth of clothes i always like to pack two extra days because you never know and you gotta remember that's eight days right but i'm with Lindsay, who's gonna probably pack three outfits for one day and <laughs> i felt the eyes in the oh, back of my oh, head <laughs> she's right she's right behind you oh I'm, yeah. I'm not i'm not gonna say a word <laughs> <laughs> and then on top of that you know you gotta pack your park clothes and you have to park, pack dinner clothes if you're going to a, a, a fancier restaurant or something along the lines of that. So yeah, um, she uh, <clears throat> she <laughs> she called she called you out, brother, just to let you know. <laughs> um, the the I don't know if it's advantages or disadvantages for our significant others to be watching the show along with us. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Um, so let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Do you, I mean, you say that you, you basically are the kind of person that packs one type of outfit, outfit per day and with a couple extras thrown in for good measure. Um, are you the kind of person that knows exactly what you're going to wear at what park before you even go down? Yeah. Okay. I have shirts for specific parks. Okay. Cause I know and my, it's, and it's coordinated like right now I have my luggage halfway packed, but the problem is, is um, I haven't sorted out what shirts go with what pants yet. See, the funny part is you and Kathy would get along really well because she's like, when she goes to pack, she's like, now, when we go to Epcot, we're all going to wear our figment shirts. And when we go to Hollywood Studios, we're all going to wear this shirt. And when we go to the Magic Kingdom, we're going to wear this outfit. And well, you know, Because you can't show up to Hollywood, Stu- oh, yeah, yeah, Hollywood Studios with a Lion King shirt on. Why not? No. Lion <laughs> King, you would wear an Animal Kingdom. But if you had a different Animal Kingdom shirt? Well, then that's a different story, but I don't. I only have one. So that is, that is my go. If you look over the years, I wear the same shirt in Animal Kingdom because it's the only Animal <laughs> it's the only animal shirt from Disney I own. Yeah. Wow. I never thought of that until just now. What? That, that you same actually, shirt. Yeah, you wear the same thing over and uh, okay. Never mind. Uh-huh. 
Right? No, and even some <clears throat> parks, there are certain shirts that, like when I go to Toy Story, I will wear my Made in the 90s t-shirt. This will be like trip number six where I wear that, especially going to Toy Story. I mean, you got to. Ma- Magic Kingdom is the one where... <laughs> Real what? men, real men don't wear the band shirt to the concert. It's like, don't be that guy. Yeah, well, some of us don't live six minutes away, Brian. <laughs> this is my <laughs> this is my one time to be excited. Don't rain on my parade, bro. What are you doing? I want a match. Well, I, I... <laughs> jeez, don't eat on my birthday. <laughs> you know, well, I, I here's the thing. Do you do you actually pack extra for like? crap weather incidents like if you get all wet during the day head back to the resort do you actually change like i said i i have essentially two extra days in my luggage at any time just because for that instance if you you know you get wet or if it's one of those really 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 hot days and i go for a break in the the room the last thing i want to do is wear a a damp sweaty t-shirt back into a park so yeah i'll change my t-shirt i'm a bigger guy so i wear a lot of like t-shirts under my t-shirts like the undershirts so usually what I can get away with, I can change that undershirt and then just keep on the T-shirt above it. Um, I, I, die. But, I would die of heat exhaustion. if I. But see, that. that's the way I was raised. That's all, you know, that was, you know. Okay, I can see that. I, so I, that's I, the only way I know. But I mean, I mean, you never know, because God forbid your flight gets delayed. You need clothes. I mean, because I really don't want to do laundry while I'm in Disney. But listen, I was at Universal for Harry Potter anniversary six years ago, and... I only brought one pair of shoes down because I usually only will bring one pair of shoes, you know, outside of dress shoes. But I wear one pair of either sneakers, clogs, whatever I'm wearing that moment. OK, problem is, is it poured rain the, that first day to the point of there was about three inches of standing water in Universal. Ooh. What are you going to do? Eventually, I took my shoes off, but. You're you're done at that point. Mm-hmm. Now they're the mesh Crocs that I wear, like the the, the jean looking material almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had to get two hair dryers, push the hair dryers inside of the shoes, and let them run for about four hours because no, what you can't buy, you cannot buy shoes inside of a park. People, you can buy flip flops, and I'm not a flip flop guy. You cannot buy shoes. What do you do? You used to be able to buy croc type stuff at Disney, and I don't even know that's if they where have I have them, but they don't carry them anymore. I know you could buy normal crocs, but um, you know, <clears throat> that's not- I, I can't work. I I I, I, lo- I learned my lesson the hard way when I wore regular leather shoes. Okay, and I made that mistake once. And I mean, basically, because those things got wet, I swear it was like wearing 20 pound bricks on my feet. It just and and not to mention, it just felt bad. And so I didn't like that. From that point forward, I just I just now wear basically running shoes that are mesh and nylon ish type of fabric. And they're very lightweight. They don't hold in a lot of water. You know, if I want them to dry them out, I can take the insole out air them out for a couple hours boom done it's as simple as that and um it's one of those one of those cases where i learned that learned that trick i'm like i am so fine with it uh because you, and also i do carry now an extra pair of shoes just plain and simple extra pair of shoes yes. yeah this one and also i may have five outfits but i'll have 10 pairs of socks just oh, i bring a lot of socks you know a lot I don't usually stress about what I pack. And of course, then my wife would say that's because she stresses over what she well, packs for us. Got it. Well, it's always like the night before you got to do the laundry, you know, and you got to make sure that you have this. And then you're like, oh, maybe one more item. And sure. it's just like well, you, you know, have the luxury of you. You tend to uh, drive a lot. I do. So I do have the luxury of being able to carry an extra suitcase if I really want to. Or um, even if, God forbid, you forget something. If And, and there, ha- okay, serious as a heart attack. There were times where we did forget something and you had to go do a Target run or a Walmart run. And then you're like, oh, crap, really? And um, although, you know, what's the best way of putting it? You feel silly because you feel silly because you're going to spend an hour out of your way away from the parks in order to pick up what you should have already planned for. 
But yeah. but it's one of those things, that, you know, it happens. There's not much you can really do about it. But it is a luxury of having a car. Um, not really the best thing to do, but fine. The, um, the bad part is, is that what if it's something that you really don't, you can't afford to forget. Like for example, um, I, I try to not forget anything from my camera. One year I forgot my charger. That's a tough one. It's tough because fortunately I had, I had three batteries for that camera. So I, I was able to stretch it out throughout, you know, that time. It really wasn't a big deal, but it, it freaked me out big time because, um, that I don't I don't buy a lot of stuff anymore. Yeah. But I take a ton of pictures. That's like my okay. life, you know. Between that and memory cards, although you can buy memory cards in the park, but they charge you six times as much as Amazon. Do they really? Is it that I've never even I never would have even thought. I usually use um I usually use high speed sixty four gig cards for my for my uh for my Canon. And you can't even find those types of things. You know, it's like usually it'll be like fifty dollars or more for a large memory. And you know, when I when I bought them for fourteen dollars on Amazon during Black Friday, mm-hmm. so it's just one of those things you try not to uh, forget. But let me ask you this: Do you ever you carry your luggage on, or do you check it in? I check it. Okay, so you're not worried about like. TSA going through your crap. At, at, at well, the... I mean, I have technically my carry, my personal bag with me, but I mean, I don't really, if they go through my stuff, I ain't got nothing to hide. You know what I mean? Everything that's breakable, I keep on my persons. So my gimbal is on my persons. Yeah. Uh, if I have my laptop, if I'm doing business, it's on my persons. Outside of that, I mean, Go ahead. You want to rifle through my underwear? Have have a blast, dude. <laughs> I, I always <laughs> if that's, like, if that's what you want to do, man. I I always, fancy. I always feel I always feel bad for the people at TSA who are like going through the luggage like after you check it in because it's like, hey, I'm really sorry, but I've been living out of a suitcase for a week now. You know, if you really yeah. think you saw something, it's up to you. And I really apologize in advance. Yeah, it's it's definitely uh, one of those things. What is one thing that you have forgotten at Disney that you realize you just had to suck up and deal with it? Something that I've missed um, that I've had to actually just deal with, or I went out and bought. Then you had I've to forgotten deal- like phone chargers. That's that stinks. That's like the hardest to deal with. I think anything you anytime you deal with tech. Yeah, now then I mean nowadays it's so easy you just go get one. You know, I mean everybody's readily available with them. You mean crap, you could buy them in the airport. No, you, all right. So one time I was leaving Disney and right. this is tough, okay? So the iPhone, what do I have? The 10? Whenever they changed the headphone jack yeah. where you couldn't use you had to use like the fast acting whatever they call it. I left Disney and I forgot my headphones in the hotel room. I had a two and a half hour flight home. Now, granted, that's not long, but so I go to the airport. I'm like, all right, let's buy new headphones, whatever. Well, they don't sell those headphones at the airport, right? So that that to me stunk because I had all these movies ready, all these podcasts ready to listen to, <laughs> and then I sat on a plane and like this, my arms crossed like this, like, ooh, this is boring. No book, no nothing. So I literally spent an hour and a half at the airport looking through their books, thinking like, I right, was buy a book and read it nothing that tickled my fancy that would say i mean outside of tech i've never forgotten shoes oh i did forget a belt one year that was crucial that was that was an uber to the walmart first day (laughs) i I was looking myself okay danny decided to take some of the plastic disney bags that have three buys (laughs) i am kind of like you know bit it into a rope you know kind of maybe braid it together make it look pretty cool then tie it like a like a monk or something I like wish. that. Sunglasses. Yep. I. You know what it is? I don't necessarily forget sunglasses. I lose sunglasses. Or I end up breaking sunglasses. That's me. I know. Okay. Um, okay. Kathy just bought a pair of prescription sunglasses. And she's like, Ooh. and the funny part is, is that I, t- I told her, you know, you can get a pair of prescription sunglasses. I don't have a problem. She's like, 
I'm just so concerned I'm going to lose them. I'm like, yes, this is a concern of mine as well, considering how much they just cost you. But it's kind of like, they you know. They cost you. I, listen. <laughs> I'll say it. Don't worry about I, it. I, I, I'm, I, I'm not trying to sound like a jerk or anything like that, but the, but the truth hurts. Uh, and, and, and so does that. So does that bill that comes in if you have to get those puppies replaced. Uh, oh, I'm sure. You know, it was really kind of, it was really kind of uh, uh, funny. Um, you know, I've never had to do laundry. I've just we, never chosen to. I find it a little, I'm not saying odd. Ah, that's not the right word that was coming out. I find it fascinating when people do their laundry on their trip. Why? I mean, it's, I mean, Sometimes it really just makes sense. That's so why I find it fascinating. Like, but like you found time in your day to go do your laundry. Well, the thing is, is that you make not necessarily you make time. Is that you multitask? Because most of the laundry facilities, not all, but a lot of the most, um, laundry facilities, are right near a pool. Mm-hmm. So it's time for some pool time. I mean, I don't care where you are. Pool time is always it's fabulous. Just a thing, though. All right, so this is maybe because just the way I grew up. I've always grown up. I've never had to go to, go to a laundromat. I usually go – I have laundry in-house. So I fi- – like do you – this sounds so silly and someone's going to railroad me. Do you just leave your laundry in there and just go back in the pool? Yeah. I mean okay. I, I see it this way. If someone wants a pair of my drawers, <laughs> they can have it. God bless you because you not. obviously need them a lot better. A lot more than I do, and if yeah. you know, and if if you if you get to fit in them too, <laughs> congratulations! More than welcome. <laughs> I mean, it's it's you know, I mean, I listen. I don't know. Do you want to sail for a sailboat? I mean, you know, it's just, you know, fine. Like, I was just looking, like, think about it. So this is so off the beaten track. It has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but it just crossed my mind. Like, airlines are ridiculous. Yeah. They're so expensive. Like, all right, so everybody talks about how cheap spirit is. Cheap my tukas. That's what they are. So somehow two tickets to fly down there round trip. Now, for you, this is going to sound amazing because of your area. For me, this is super expensive. So for two of us round trip, $403. And that's also paying $60 to pick our seats. 30 each way see I, yeah, yeah so for you you're you would be jumping for joy so i messed up with trying to ship our luggage so now i gotta take it round trip to bring our luggage and we have to be at 40 pounds or spirit spirit will hit you at 41 they will hit you so you have to be very careful with spirit 160 dollars for two pieces of luggage round trip well does it have to be round trip i mean can you ship them back yourself you could technically, but then it just becomes a little bit of a logistical nightmare. Oh. You can't do it. Were you were you planning on just shipping it down there and then paying Spirit to bring it back? No, no, no. But the way my account works is it's tied in where it will show the ship and then it will show the pickup to come back. Mm, okay, I got you. So now. the thing is, because then I now then would have to take time out of my day on Friday to then call FedEx, let them come pick it up, and then. Hope to God that whoever picks it up understands the process of who I am, who I work for, and be like, what well, you know, make sure all the discounts, everything come off. So it's, it, it's not, it, you could do it. You know, if I was just chilling at a pool or if it was, you know, I was on a beach or something, yeah, who cares? But when you pay a lot of money, especially for, to get into a park, why waste it? But it's crazy expensive for like $160 and you only get 40 pounds. Now, granted, if we buy a lot of souvenirs or something, what I like, what I, and I've done this before, what I'll do is I'll get a box from guest services, whatever, and I'll pack it with all my dirty clothes. I'll call FedEx, but come pick it up. Cause if they don't show up on time, I don't care. I'm not there. <laughs> Just get me my clothes when you get me my clothes. It's not the end of the world. And then I pack all my souvenirs in my luggage. I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, that, that's actually a really cool tactic if you think about it. I mean, okay, it's very, very rare occasion that I think lo- airlines actually lose luggage these days. But, but Didn't it just happen to you like a year ago? Yeah, but considering how many miles I have under my belt, I mean, it's, it's, actually, it's actually quite amazing at the fact that 
you know, it, and it, they didn't lose it. They misplaced it. It did show I up. I love that. Yeah, I know. They it showed it, up on the wrong plane. That happened to me two years ago. No, it when didn't I met show- you, and they, they didn't ship my, mm. they, they set my luggage on a different plane. I was like, how did I beat my luggage here? You know, it was, it was kind of funny because, um, I know exactly what happened. The luggage actually took a different route home than I did. And there was, there was weather in that route home. Not a big deal. I did get my luggage 12 hours later. But, okay, but it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't bad and it wasn't destroyed and they were very good about it, but it was like, um, it's more of an inconvenience at that point though. Yeah. And the other problem of it is, is, you know, Casey and Verge had to leave, you know, like the day after. So we really didn't have too many pieces of, you know, they didn't have any clothes really too much. They didn't have anything sitting at home. So, you know. It's it's one of those things that you end up doing. But let me ask you this: is there's one is there one thing special that you pack for every trip that you think many people probably wouldn't pack? A hat. Like what kind of hat? Like a baseball cap? Any like a, of, any, any type of hat you want to wear? Like one of those pontoon hats, big sun hat, whatever you want to wear. I think a hat is very very important. Okay. Yeah. I mean, look at what Carol had to say. She's like, they're super expensive, but not like from Newfoundland. One thousand two hundred and thirty dollars for the three of them. That's an yeah. that's that, and I'm saying that's why I, I started. I prefaced the statement with, "This is going to make a lot of people cringe because it's nothing to them." But you got to put yourself in my shoes when I'm used to doing round trip for like eighty six bucks. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you know that's a big difference when you're talking about even rounded up to a hundred with seats and luggage. I've quadrupled. Well, let's call it double because I would have had a second person with me when I was traveling. But, you know, actually, Lauren actually brings up a nice little point. There are some people that if you have some airlines that if you use their credit card, you can get free check luggage type of thing, which actually, if you do fly enough, you can probably overcome any annual fee that, you know, it imposes anyway. I've actually been very tempted to do that at times. Or fly Southwest where they give it to you for free. Yeah, you get two bags each person for free. I mean, you can practically yeah. move half your house. With you really food. can. That's why if if I wasn't in love with the location of this airport, I would fly Southwest everywhere. I would pay a premium. to. I would pay more money to fly Southwest solely because of major – but major things. You get free two bags checked. That's how, You're talking about 100 pounds of clothes and souvenirs. That's a lot yeah. for one person. Then you get, if you pay that little bit of extra of a fee, you get priority boarding. So you get on the plane first. You can make sure you get your overhead bin. You've got time. It's it's free seating, so you don't have to worry about paying an upcharge for seats. The seats are just larger. It's more comfortable. The stewardess, I guess that's is that still the technical flight vernacular? Att- flight attendants. Flight attendants. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just much nicer. Spirit just sucks. They'll never be a sponsor. <laughs> I kill him too that much. That's what you keep saying. That. Ah. Um, you know, it, it's kind of interesting. Uh, speaking of the things that people tend to bring that maybe no one else does, Christine says toilet paper. It's, really? It's something that she packs. And you know what? There, I've heard that doesn't, to me, that doesn't sound odd because, and Christine, not to make, I'm not making funny at all. There are a lot of people that I've said, I've heard say, don't like the TP at WDW, so they bring their own. Uh, or, as, or as we like to refer to it, uh, I was joking around with my son when he goes camping. It's AP paper, all-purpose paper, because you can use it for anything from clean, cleaning, cleaning yourself to blowing your nose to wiping something down. It's kind of fun. Uh, and uh, Brian mentions chapstick. He always makes sure that's, he has Yeah, it. that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I can't tell you how many times I've had to buy like a tube of chap, chapstick or Carmex or something like that uh, when I'm traveling. It's... it's uh, it's really, it's I'm really, uh, odds and end things. Yeah. And and it, Trish mentions also one set of necessities in your carry on always. And that's true. You know, biggest, biggest thing people don't realize you better have the things that are the most valuable to you in your carry on, including meds, ID, anything. You know anything, and it's very good you you word it that way because that's always been my philosophy. My you know my parents taught me that as a young age. Don't hand over something you're not willing to lose. And someone mentioned that earlier. I can't go back up to it, but someone made that 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 very comment. Don't pack anything you're not afraid to have disappear or broken. I mean, who you know? 
I, I don't want anything broken, and neither do they. They don't want to deal with that hassle. Yeah. But at the end of the day, my shorts go missing for a week. Mm. As long as it, now, let me let me preface it that though. Hmm. As long as it's after my trip. Good point. Good point. You know, it's kind of interesting. Uh, Trisha mentioned she brings baby wipes, which again, oh, that's funny. That's, that, yeah. that's that's a really good idea, especially the small travel travel pack of of baby wipes. They are good for everything. Um, especially around cold and flu season, if you ask me. Uh, Beth says she packs gum. I think that's awesome uh, because you can't really buy gum at Walt Disney World. Uh, Lindsay uh, also says bringing chapstick. Uh, Brandy, Brandy brings a pillow. And I've heard that too. Uh, Mark says uh, my wife needs her own soap. She hates Disney soap, but he still loves her. Cool. Um, let's see. Mary says cords, hat shades small bills that is something that i never think about is bringing small bills especially for tips that makes a big yeah. difference and because let's face it people should be you know tipping bell services and this that and the other uh body says shampoo and conditioner and you know that's the funny part there are a lot of people that actually bring their own shampoo and conditioner because of several different reasons not everybody likes the disney shampoo and conditioner i i i, I love it Love it. I love it. But the fact of the matter is, I know there are some people like I can't. I, they're they're like really allergic or really sensitive to it. So Brenda mentions, you know, sanitizer, hand sanitizer. I, I can't tell you. We bring the little hand sanitizer. It has like a little bungee on it on your, you know, sits on the um, edge of my camera bag or something like that. Just a little bit of yeah, hand yeah. sanitizer. Um, oh, and it was Mary, by the way. Got to give credit where credit is due that she says, don't check stuff you can't part with. Um Oh, and Brian also says, one change of clothes and a carry-on. I learned my yeah. lesson, Brian. You are absolutely yeah. correct. Yep. Yeah. When he's right, he's right. Because that is the God honest truth. And we've always we've been preaching that for a while. Oh yeah. You know, the interesting thing is, and I'm not this this is actually interesting. Alex says he puts his camera in carry on luggage. Which yeah. uh, you know, some people do. Some people do. It's, um, you know, I oh, will wait. Carry on. I'm reading that as check on. Forget check it. Check bag. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I always, I do not put anything electronic in a checked piece of baggage. Um, my camera is in its own case. And what I do is I clip it onto my backpack. So it's kind of like, it looks like it's just a part of my backpack. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's one okay. big carry on. Um, and, and I also, and I watch like a hawk as well. I want to go back to, um, a statement you made What's about that? the small bills. Yeah. I feel like I'm the only person who ever tips the Disney Magical Express person. I almost said man. That was not a sexist thing. That was more of a just a way I'd speak. Like the person driving the bus. I always tip them. Even if they don't put anything underneath? Yeah. I don't know. They did a service. They drove me. Now, granted, I guess you can look at it as like that's their job. Sure. I know. But what's two bucks? You're about to go on vacation. Or you're just coming home from vacation. That's what is two bucks going to do for you in Disney? Nothing. You can't do anything in Disney for two dollars. You can't even buy a cup of coffee for two bucks. You can't buy a bottle of water for two bucks. <laughs> you might be able to buy like a Hershey Kiss random. You know what I mean? Like even that, you can't buy anything. Oh, uh, oh, Heather. Yeah, I'm ask uh, Jess and Nick about their their pennies and quarters. Yeah, yeah. I mean, anytime Nick sees. The press penny, press penny, press penny. Honey, yeah. honey, give me, give me, give me a couple quarters. Give me a penny. Yeah, that's that's exactly what he does. Um, yep. You know, I don't unless they do like put something underneath. Okay, here's another question. Hmm. So, like now we have we're bringing our luggage with us. So it's been a while since I've done this. Mm -hmm. Now, when I booked. I never got the strap because I actually just realized when I got my magic bands, I never linked my flight. So I actually have to do that. So they know I'm getting on the magical express because did that one time. That was not fun. They didn't give me a hard time, but you know, they kind of jostled me around a little bit. Um, so when you, if you put that strap on like that one that has like AKL on yeah, or the wherever yellow, you're the yellow luggage tag. Yes. The yellow luggage tag. Eat, do you put it on? We'll start that question. If you were flying, do you put that on? Yes, I do. Okay. So so when you get off the plane, do you not go get your luggage? Do you just let it show up when it shows up? 
I let it show up when it shows up. If you want to pick it up yourself, don't put on the yellow tag. Okay. But you have to pick it up yourself then. Yeah. I mean, I don't have the yellow tag anyway, but I always picked up my own luggage because I just, I don't want to wait. And and the thing of it is, my take on it is that if you're if you're, especially if you're getting a flight that's going to arrive after six p.m. is and, and okay, some people say after eight. I say after six. Pick up your own luggage. You have it with you. You don't have to worry about when it actually gets there. Correct. And and that's just that's my take. If I'm I'm usually arriving in the morning anyway, so and after I get there, I'm going to drop my stuff off and I'm going to head to a park or I'm going to go do something. I'm not going to sit around. I, I'm not going to sit around waiting for my luggage or waiting for my room to be ready. I'm going to go head to the park. Now our DVC people, including yourself might be a little more knowledgeable on it. I've gotten lucky in some previous trips where I've shown up at nine, 10 in the morning right. and a room's just been ready. It probably was a room that wasn't occupied the night before. Right. And I might have just been one of the first people to walk in the door and try to check in for that particular room. Right. Does that happen at DVC or is it more, yeah, you ain't getting your room till like three or four? It really depends. Like you said, it depends on whether or not you're in a slower part of the season. A room may have already been vacant. It meets the needs and criteria of the type of room you reserved. Um I would probably see less than 20% of it happens early. Yeah, that happens actually before three or four o'clock. Normal check in time for anything that's non DVC is three o'clock. DVC resorts are four o'clock. And I don't ever expect my room to be ready before four o'clock. In fact, I do kind of expect it to be a little bit later. But here's also the thing, Danny. I, you know, we do, we do che- online check in. But here's the thing they say, oh, we'll send you. A text message when your room is ready. With all due respect to Disney, probably only half the time do I actually get a text message saying our room is ready with the actual room number. And all the other times we're done, we end up having to go back to, you know, front desk anyway to find out what our room number is. I don't know why. It just it just so happens that way. But I will say this the odds are getting more in my favor lately. The past several trips I say so. Wait, hold on. Hmm. So it gets linked. So if they'll send you that text message, your room's ready, and they can link it to your magic band without actually having your magic band there to scan. Right. Huh. Yeah. If you do online check in. Now, I don't want to use the magic band that, that they sent me because it's just a plain red one. Mm-hmm. It's all about your magic band. I have, all I have of- my Toy Story one. Is it already linked with your My Disney Experience account? Incorrect. No. Okay. It has to be your the magic Link. band. The magic band. Yes, yeah. I can't talk tonight. The magic band you want to use has to be linked. Once it's linked, it will automatically work. Hmm. But if I don't, if I didn't link it, I could just go to the front desk when I check in and be like, "Link this." All you have to do is link it on your phone. I just type in the number on the back mm-hmm. side of it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it'll it'll work just fine. Because yeah, um, I lost my, I cannot find it. I'm also in the middle of packing, so I can't find my haunted uh, my Tower of Terror yellow one, which is fine anyway uh, because okay. Lindsay had got me the Toy Story one a few months ago, so I still want to wear it. Advil or a leave? Yeah, what was that? yeah, for pain. Uh, I'd be, like I'd like, be profen. Well, yeah, I mean the thing is, is that well, Advil is ibuprofen. A leave is a different type. I take two a leave every night before I go to bed. Uh, that's funny. When only when you're in Disney or when you're at home too. Only when I'm in Disney. <laughs> Well, I take a lot of ibuprofen just because of my arthritis and everything and my sure. knees and whatnot. But uh, when I'm in Disney, every night, it doesn't matter. I will have like a little snack, some water, and I put down 600 milligrams of ibuprofen just so it just takes that edge off. So when I wake up, I'm fresh. I I agree. I, I totally agree. And um, oh, Q-tips. Q-tips is actually one of those interesting things. Um so I usually take some kind of some kind of anti-inflammatory and it really helps me feel better. So um by the way I'm going to I'm going to have post this coming up from Brian. I'm going to have uh, Nick and Jess go crazy over this that there's new penny machines in Pandora just installed. I can hear hold on a second. Yes, I hear Nick all the way from Wisconsin cheering right now. So <laughs> yeah. 
Um, it's really, it's really pretty, pretty crazy. By the way, speaking of packing, and I'm not making this a whole tipping episode or anything like that, but Christine actually comments something here about the bills and everything else. So I think you still have to be prepared for this. You know, she says, speaking of tipping, I've seen a lot of complaining on different Disney pages the last couple of days about tipping at restaurants, especially buffets. And, you know, it's interesting. Um, I think it's interesting that people don't realize that you do have to, you do have to tip a lot of people, um, servers, especially always servers. Wait, rephrase that. You what? don't have to, it is the right thing. Uh, to do. okay. You know what? I have to, I, you're right. I have to be careful how I say that because like example to me, I don't, I don't tip the bus driver unless he's handling my luggage. I'm sorry. I don't go ahead. Sh- you know, totally shun me if that's horrible. No, but, I, I think you're the my, majority there. I probably am, but I, this is because no, I'll tell you right now. He takes my bag and gives it back to me. He's getting a couple bucks a bag easy. And then yeah. it's usually four or five bags. So the, you know, there's going to be 10 to $15, if not more for, for his services to help me out. And at the one time, I'll be honest, the one time we, uh, we didn't have bags, but my mom and my mother-in-law and they, and he helped, he helped them. I did tip them for help for them helping my, uh, helping the moms, you know, because they provided a service, but servers, I always tip. And even if the, and I'll be honest with you, if the food was bad or something like that, I still tip the servers. Um, yeah. Accordingly. Now, if servers give out poor service, absolutely. I, that tip is going to be impacted by it, but I'm also going to try to get it rectified before I leave. I'm not looking for something for free, but I do expect to have decent service. So you're at least a, I'm gonna. I can't say the way I want to want because I'll get killed if I say it that no, way. Go ahead. So you do, can I say it the way I want? Fine. Go ahead. I don't care. All right. So you're still a decent human being and saying, "Hey, this is how you make a living." Even though your service was terrible, you still leave them something instead of stiffing them. I don't. I never stiff them. Okay. Good. I never stiff them, and, I, and you know what? And I don't think there's anything wrong with even asking that question. I never stiff anybody. I mean, if if your services are horrible, I'm still going to probably tip you fifteen percent, which ten years ago was considered. I've gone down to ten at times, if, but you got to be real. But I grew up in the restaurant industry. My yeah. family still working in the restaurant, so I understand. You know, but also, yeah. if you do an outstanding job, I'll go to twenty five percent. I've left thirty percent. Easy, easy, and especially if you're a bartender. Yeah, bartender, I, I, you can make <laughs> bartenders love me. <laughs> but it's one of those things where it's like, I I do believe tipping is good, you know, good etiquette for good service. Uh, you know, don't don't expect me to tip someone that's not doing anything though. That's, that's the only thing I have to say. It's just, you know, I do have, I do have an understanding of who should be tipped and who shouldn't be. Always tip, man. Like I got a haircut, a beard shave today. Lady fit me in at my local spot up where I work. No appointment. She gave me a hot shot, a hot, uh, hot towel. towel, shaved mm. me up. Haircut was 28 bucks. So haircut and beard, 28 bucks. What, what does a normal person leave them? Well, my haircut, my haircut's usually sixteen. I'd leave a five dollar tip. Okay, I left her fifteen, and that's just because yeah. you went above and beyond. So you gave me a good cut. You treated me nice. Yeah. There was a bunch of people in there who knew nothing about Disney, and we're trying to tell. Oh, <laughs> and a guy behind me waiting to get his haircut. Cause people are talking. I was like, yeah, you know, talking about Disney. And they're like, I'll oh, tell us more. And then the one guy goes, I just got back. Do you know? that they are extending the monorail to downtown Disney. Oh, my gosh. I literally snapped my head back. I was like, let me tell you something, sir. (laughs) It is not happening. (laughs) He was like, no, they told me. I was like, you got misinformation. Now, the interesting thing, Christine also mentions, you know, do you tip the bus drivers that take you to the parks? No, it's not a tip position. And and a lot of times they're supposed to actually refuse it. From what I understand, bus drivers out there would be more than happy to correct me. But no, I but- I have though, like if it's the last bus of the night and it's me, like I've taken a bus from Disney Springs at two something in the morning and it's just me and he's driving me over to like Riverside. Right. From a couple bucks. I'm usually sitting right by him talking to him because I, I don't want to sit in a creepy bus by myself because it's all dark. I usually have a couple drinks in me and he looks lonely and 
I'm lonely. I want to talk to somebody. I mean, I will say this. I, we always say thank you. Oh, you bet. Always. I mean, we make it bet. a point. We're usually like the last people off the bus anyway because we like to sit in the wave way back. We're always yeah, we're always thanking people. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm, I like to stand right in the doorway of like where the the ETV was it. What what, what are the scooters called? ETVs. ECVs. No. Yeah, like where the strollers are, like that side ramp. I like to stand in that doorway. But because I don't, if it's a packed bus, I always stand up. We've gone into that. We're not oh, going yeah. into that again. No, we're not. But that's why, like, I mean, if there's a seat and it's early in the morning, like I've ridden the bus by myself to Animal Kingdom, yeah, I'll sit down. I'll kick a few kicks my feet up. But if I got to stand, I like to stand in that wheel well right area. I just feel a little safer. Just in case I've got, I've got a little little room to get jiggity over there. Limbo. No. Limbo on my feet. Limbo. You know, um, so the interesting, uh, the interesting part to it is, you know, tipping is obviously something you have to be prepared for, especially if it's like if you're tipping at a restaurant, obviously you can add it to your magic band. You can pay it with the gift card. You can pay it with the credit card. You can pay it with cash, pay it with the debit card. It's all those little places that, you know, you tr- if you want to tip a couple bucks here, a couple bucks there, having a number of singles helps out a lot, you know, or yeah. or like bell services. OK, let's face it. I kind of pre determine what I'm going to pay bell services at the minimum. And if I have seven or eight bags, I know that I'm going to be at least dropping 15 bucks. So I'll have a 10, I'll have a five, I'll have some extra singles on top of it to adjust it accordingly. I had a new question. So mm. this is my first time staying DVC yes. and I'm there for seven nights. So they're yes. only going to show up in the middle of the week mm-hmm. for mousekeeping. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter if I tip them on Wednesday or I tip them on Sunday when I leave, but that changes their tip then for me because you only came in my room once but because that is their job. I'm not saying they're not doing their job, but you, you just impacted your tip from me then. Well, okay. That is – I think some people see that as true because I personally think that when they come in for the for the trash and tidy service in the middle of your stay, generally speaking, it's a very lightweight type of you know service. It, you know, it may be that they're there for three or four minutes and that's it. And they're not going to do much other than replace your towels, tr- empty out your trash. Well, they, empty well, they out don't your- change the sheets. They don't and they won't unless you pay for it. Um, they may not even make your bed on that day. Sometimes I've seen them do it, but it's very inconsistent, at least with me. But, you know, tip them your normal size tip at the end of the trip for sure. So you're saying give them the normal tip that I normally would give mousekeeping at the end. Wait, 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 wait. So mousekeeping that if I'm at Riverside for seven nights, we'll keep the same exact day's trip. I would tip them roughly anywhere from 50 to 70 bucks. Do you only tip them at the end? I always tip them at the end. Yeah. At the end of the week. And now I get it. Sometimes you don't get the same people. I get it. But that's how you do it. But that's just how I do it because I've left money out. And unless you leave a note, don't, they won't take it. They they, that's a responsible thing. Not that you don't take someone's money. So after just forgetting to put notes and everything, I'm sorry. And I, I do feel bad for the people that maybe took care of me five nights and got gypped. I hope that people are good hearted people and realize, hey, like, you know, this person was the person cleaning the room. But I know that doesn't happen. So, yeah, at the end of the week. But I would tip them between 50 and 70 bucks, roughly around close to ten dollars a day. I'm not tipping somebody who's walked in my room for three minutes one day, 70 bucks. No, I think you have to. I think that you would be totally in the right to adjust it accordingly. I, I really might throw you a five. You might. You might. And, and at the, but at the end, you might want to, you might want to adjust you like it. Five and a five. You know what I mean? Like Probably. five on Wednesday, five on Sunday. Probably. Like I know it sounds cheap, but like that's the trade off for me saying at DVC. If you're not like, and like I said, it all varies. The people at, now it pop, they do a great job, but it was the bare minimum job. You got about an average of six to seven dollars, eight dollars a day. When I was at Riverside and it was just me in the room, I still and they knew it was just me because I've ran into the ladies a couple of times. I was still getting uh characters on my bed, which I understand. They oh anything I ever asked for the day before, when I got back, it was there and in abundance. So yeah, that lady was getting bigger money. I think you have to use your best judgment. And I think that's that's the only that's the only thing that I think varies between people. Is that you have to just use your best judgment when deciding what do you want to tip. If you're gonna if your room is a pigsty 
you may want to leave a few extra because, well, you you did that to them. Yeah. If, if you're, like, we don't normally leave our room dirty. You know, it's generally speaking, it's pretty clean. Put the um, garbage in the garbage can. You don't live in a barn. Exactly. You know, it's it's one of those things we just really try to keep things clean because, after all, we're we're living there. You know, we don't want to live in filth, and yeah. they, ha- they have a vacuum cleaner. We've actually used a vacuum cleaner. Oh, really? So yeah. I wouldn't go that extent. Well, Unless I dropped something like popcorn or something, like, you know, stepped in it. Here's the thing. If you, like, let's say that um, you accidentally track something in from your shoes and stuff like that. Okay. You take it and you That's run more up. for you than for them. Though. Exactly. That's what I'm exactly talking about. It's, it's just one of those things where, one of those things where, you know, we just want to keep it clean because otherwise it's going to get L over everything else. Yeah. So like, it, I know like uh, when me and Matt were down there, it was like a frat party and that has to look like there was solo cups and, you know, bottles of liquor and bottles of beer everywhere. But we made sure that every day when we left to get leave in the morning, all the good stuff that we wanted to keep went on the desk in a nice, neat order. And then all the empty bottles, got thrown out and sometimes if the garbage can was too full and i felt bad if it was a lot of like glass or anything like that yeah i would take it with me no, I understand when i that. walked out so you know like oh, just be courteous dude you know how you know what it is? i walk by people's rooms and i see the garbage they leave and i'm like i wonder how you live because just because they're doing their job doesn't mean you gotta make their life harder no absolutely not i mean I mean, it's it's just a courtesy thing, and that's regardless if it's mousekeeping or whatever, it's just it's just one of those things, um, you know. And actually, Christine is like, am I the only one that likes to leave a cash tip and not put it on my debit card? I only leave cash. I always put it in my debit card, or I always put it in my really? card. Really, I didn't know you could even do that. You can uh, even with a dining plan. And uh, oh, you mean for okay? I thought you meant mousekeeping. I was like, how do you? Do oh that? no, no, I'm sorry. Sorry, I, I we kind of shifted gears without pressing okay, on the clutch. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I was in the wrong gear. I didn't, I didn't hit the clutch fast enough. Yeah. So, so you, so you, so so if you pay with the dining plan or gift card or whatever, what do you do when the bill comes? You say, "Hey, I want to use this Disney gift card," and then you hand them your debit card and say, "I want to leave my tip on that." You can if you want. I mean, they'll do whatever you want with it. If you're on a dining plan. It'll tell you how much you, uh, it'll, it'll give you recommended amounts for 18, 20 and 22 percent or something like that. And you put in your tip, you tell them what method of payment you want to do and they'll take care of it. And um, even if it's a different form. So even if you're doing a dining plan, you're scanning your magic band. If you want to do it in a different way, you can. You can put it on a gift card or a, a credit or debit card or you can have it just charged to your room, just like any other charge. I huh. I don't carry a lot of cash with me in the parks. I may carry twenty bucks in cash, but how much? All right, I, this might be personal, but I don't hmm. think it's it is. How much cash would you bring down for an eight day trip? If you knew that you buy your souvenirs, you buy your food with gift cards and credit cards. Let's just talk miscellaneous. You know, you you know, you just have a little bit of dough for tips. You know, little th- like what would you bring in cash for a week trip? I may bring three hundred dollars in cash. In cash, and and I'll be honest with you, most of most of the time, it's it never sees the light of day. I okay. bring I mainly bring it because of an emergency, not because I'm going to be using it for too much. I usually carry, as I said, about twenty bucks, maybe thirty. Um, walk around money and a lot of times i'll i'll do that in case for some reason disney's um charge system takes a crap can you imagine if it ever did though it has I mean, it has it yeah so what do they do if you're if you're out to dinner what do they do they i guess they force you to charge it to your room then well okay so the instances that i've heard happening where they could not charge anything to your room including dealing with um dealing with dining plans <clears throat> they make you pay for it out of pocket and then basically if you go up to the front desk they'll they'll basically revert they'll take the charge off and then they'll just take the credits off you know they'll make it right no matter what so but what i'm saying is what happens if you're sitting down at a restaurant and you just got done at la Cellier? you have a nice 150 dollars <clears throat> bill on you and you don't have any other way to pay for it you have no other way outside of a major credit card and a debit card I am sure that they have a contingency plan for it. I have never had to experience that. 
But I am. I, I'm sure they're not going to think that you're a deadbeat because it's not your fault. Well, no, it's you your know, fault. If exa- went there. Exactly. I am sure that there is probably a contingency plan in place in order to help figure that sort of thing out because they don't want you to be inconvenienced because of their inconvenience, and yeah. you know they don't want you to be unsatisfied. They want to rectify it well, and I'm sure they will. They, I mean, I'm sure they will get their credits. I'm sure they will get the payment for the for the food, whatever it is, but. It's, you know, I'm sure they have a contingency plan for it. It has yeah, happened. If you are staying on property, be like, hey, listen, here's my room. Here's my ID. It matches everything. You just charge it to the room later. Whenever it gets on the account, it gets on the account. But it's for those people that maybe are there for the day or are staying off site. That's, uh, that's interesting. That is very interesting. It is. And, um, you know, it's 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 really... It's really interesting because you never think about it. And there have been times where it's like, hey, my magic band didn't work. And a lot of times that happens. So we'll go ahead and charge something, you know, we'll, well, one of us usually has a credit card. And so that's one of the things that we stress about making sure before I leave on any trip, my credit cards are all paid off. hundred <laughs> percent. I am, I am, I, I am leaving because I mean, I'll be honest with you. If I have to buy a car to get home for some god no reason, <laughs> I'm, I am not throw- rent the car. I have to buy the I'm car. Gonna, That's Chris mentality. Right I, there. I, no, well, you have to understand something. The, and, and this is, this is, I'm saying this with a little bit of humor, but it's very somber because when 9 11 happened, I was traveling for business. Okay. And, and the thing is, is that everybody was stuck. And it made it made it obviously it was a big tragedy, but those that are around the road had to figure out a way to get home. And my manager basically said, listen, if you can't rent a car, buy one. Was was was, was your oh, I can't even get that word out. Was your company gonna reimburse you for said car? They would figure it out. They they just basically said they would they would, you know, it's like if you have buy- to though like you ain't going to the mercedes dealership buying sl 500 no 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 uh, you know the thing basically he just basically like you get home however you have to he goes if you have to buy a car buy a car and i have and i had a corporate card that had a limit big enough to buy a car, buy a car. <laughs> so you can buy a fleet on that card <laughs> you know fortunately obviously you know fortunately it wasn't that way but it was one of those cases where as something small like that i travel with all my credit cards paid off and i just take them just in case for some reason we have some huge issue. I know it sounds like way bizarre, but, but you know, it's better to be safe than sorry. Well, the thing is, it's, you, you never think about it until you've been in that situation before, which I have been. People don't realize how much I've traveled, you know, even before I started going to Disney. Um, a hot wire vehicle. Oh, Shh, we don't talk, we don't <laughs> talk we don't we don't talk about we don't we don't talk about some of these things. all right another tip i had a question oh so buffet yes how do you feel about buffets how do you tip well how do i feel about buffets look at me <laughs> um no i would probably say um i usually tip i usually tip 18 to 20 percent i do because what? It, yeah i do and it'll get to, do anything well you know what the thing is a lot of times the server usually well, okay. If the server, especially if the server is really nice, um, adds wonderful conversation, gives me some tips or whatever, uh, keeps my keeps my glass full and my plates cleaned off, I, I'll be more than happy to give them an an easy an easy eighteen to twenty percent. Wait a minute, all right. So, so if you went to like Tiffins for brunch buffet and say it's fifty bucks a pop. Yeah, and it's a family of four, so you're spending two hundred bucks for the meal. Yeah, you're leaving forty, almost forty dollars at Prob- a buffet, probably. But the thing is, I've already have that in my budget. I already. Yeah, that's a lot of money for someone to just refill the drink, clear my plate. I'm a little, little oof, man. I want to be your. I'm going to follow you around from here, from here on out. It's waiting for Chris to go to a buffet. He's going to tip me big. Well. You know, it's it's kind of it's kind of interesting because I know that a lot of people were saying, um, you know, why would you tip that much? Because, like you said, they keep your drink full, they take your plate away, they don't really make sure anything else is going on. I always find that Disney wait staff tends to go a little bit above and beyond ninety percent of the time at 
family style buffet, you know, style or character meal style meals. And that's why I do that because think about it. Those, those servers are having to deal with it just like any other restaurant. Okay. They're having to deal with, um, they're having to deal with, uh, uh, they have to split their tips out between bus service and everything else like that. Um, you know, I don't know how they get compensated otherwise, you know, in the sense of, do they usually get the, the typical server, uh, wage to be compensated by tips? Um, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that that's just the way I was raised. And obviously again, if service sucked, I'm going to say something and it's going to show up in my tip as well, but I'll never stiff them. I mean, it's just, it is oh, just no, things, but so. like, I don't know if I went out to a buffet right now, me and Lindsay, and it was called 20 bucks a person, 40 bucks. Throw them five, ten bucks. Like they didn't really. I don't know. And I'm a very, very generous tipper. Sure. I guess I'm not. I guess I'm kind of stingy when it comes to uh, buffets. Then. Well, again, it, it's just you know, it, it's just different. You know, it's really different. So it's just, it's just, it's just. Everybody does, hey, everybody tips their own way. It yeah, it's a as long as you tip. That's all we tell you. Just tip. Yeah, I mean, I try. You know, I mean, I just, I, I don't want anybody to, to think I, I don't want anybody to, th- to think that I'm some sort of cheapskate at the same time. But again, please I provide me. No, but I know what you tip on Ubers and you're out of your mind. You tip way too much on Ubers. Well, the thing is, that that's, a, that's a typical Chicago tip, though. Oh. Okay. I mean, the fact of the matter is, yeah, I tip, I, I could tip 20%. Like 50% last time. I tip ten bucks on a twelve dollar fare because I know that the people that are <laughs> that's more that's like eighty nine percent. You literally you should have just given them a hundred percent. You should have just left them. You know what you should have done? Just given them thirteen and made it an even twenty five. That's what you should have done. No, but you have to you have to understand something. I know I know like Uber and Lyft drivers that you know they're most of what they really make is really based on the tips. You drove four miles and you didn't speak to me and you left me twelve dollars. No, no, no. Okay, okay. You have to understand. They drove from one side of one side of Disney campus to the other. It was twelve miles. I was in the car for twenty some minutes. I didn't have a problem with it. No, I, listen. I do tip well, but if you suck, I'm not going to tip very well. Okay. I mean, if you suck. You do not get a big tip. No, I mean the fact of the matter is, I love I love the fact that you know. I'm going to tip somebody something, but the fact of the matter is, is that if those, if those Uber or Lyft drivers really were rude or just, you know, they tried to, you know, they tried to jip me out of, out of some money or something like that. No, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tip them that much. I mean, they get a buck or two. They may get a, a natural 20% tip, which is customary if you think about it. But I believe that if you're going to give me good service, especially for something like that, that's a to me that's a Chicagoan tip. But that's that's just how we do it. You have an extra yeah. five. You're really nice to me. Hey, brother, here you go. Go have some lunch on me. That's the way. That's the way. I, that's the way I see it. Yeah, hey, we're a little more ruthless over here in the Northeast. No, I I get it. So oh, you know what? Here's here's um here's what Brian mentioned. Because what does a non buffet do more? Take your order, bring you to two drink, bring you two drinks, try to get you dessert. Most places, someone else brings you the food. Buffet server comes three or four times, and it's the same work. You know, it's it's a lot of the same things. Yeah, but I have to do work, though. There is the difference. See, I understand what you're saying. They're not doing more. I'm doing more. You see what I'm saying? I'm physically getting up to go get something. Yeah, but the difference is, is that you're getting up two or three times and, and putting up three or four plates on the table. Three or four? I'm out in a London Well, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to make... I'm trying not to. I don't say leave them f- freaking like two fifty or you know two you know five dollars. You know it's just I don't tip like if I normally tip an average waiter or waitress twenty five percent. I'm more in the fifteen to seventeen percent. Yeah, I get it's it. You know. I mean, everybody has a little difference. Like Heather says here, I've been at Disney, I've been at a Disney buffet, waited forever to get drinks refilled, and a long time for the check. Buffets, I don't tip as much, maybe five or ten, five or ten a person. 
I'm going to swing five or ten ten percent, or maybe I don't know how you mentioned that. Five or ten dollars a person, probably should say. Yeah, because then look at the bottom line: two to three dollars a person. So, like when I go to the Chinese buffet, you better believe they're getting three bucks a head. That's it. That's all you get. I did all the work. You just refilled my drink. And let's be honest: you only cleared my plate because you need more plates for the buffet. I don't. I just feel like there's more of a. Like literally, I you can talk. Was I agree with Danny? Tip yes, but not twenty. Yes, like I've. You have more customer contact with your waitress compared uh, to a buffet waitress. No, I agree. No, I totally agree. But you know, it's kind of funny because I just happened to look down, and I can't believe that we've already used all of our time for today. I know. But here's so here's the thing. We're going to leave on this. What do you think stresses you out the most about actually packing for your trip as we close out tonight? Simply forgetting something that is irreversible and I can't go back to get or buy it. And I'll, uh, yeah. If I forget my cell phone. Yeah. If I forget my passport. If I forget my wallet. If... Oh, no, here's the one thing that stressed me out the most when I park at the airport, not losing my parking ticket. Because Atlantic City Airport, if you lose it, they charge you $10 extra to print your ticket. So, yes, those are my couple things that stressed me out the most. I think for me, what was that last comment? Uh, Brian was saying, Danny's going to love this trip if 18% is forced upon six pe- six or more people at a buffet. I'll sit at five. I'll, you know what? You five sit at that table. I'm requesting a one top right here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I, I guess. I, I guess that's how. I guess that's how it works. You know. Um, so for me, I'm always worried about making sure that I've got things turned off at home, making sure that everything is secure at home. Uh, that's a new one for me. That's a little worried. So it's it is going to be different for you now, isn't it? As of probably this you know, this time tomorrow. I mean, yeah. the, the fact of the matter is, is that I'm always concerned, like you know, making sure we've got the um our pet taken care of, making sure I turn down the water heater, making sure that I've got the lights on timers, making sure everything's secure, making sure that I got make, that everything is all set, and then if I'm flying. You know, making sure I've got the I've got the tickets, making oh. su- making making sure that I lock the car or I know where the car is, um, you know, making sure I can get to the airport on time, you know, all those types of things. Because let's face it, um, those are just the little things. Because once I finally get done in Disney, I'm good. Now, granted, if I forget something, yeah, that that actually terrifies me. I mean the the other the other the other time we went when Kathy and I were just going the two of us, I I walked into the bedroom one time. I kid you not. I stopped and I looked at her. And I said, "I'm having a nervous breakdown," and she's like, "Why?" I go, "Because I am so overwhelmed that I'm going to forget something or some. I feel like I'm forgetting something. That's the thing. That's the other part. I feel like I'm forgetting something and I can't describe what it is. It's just an overall feeling of doom." And it is just like, you know, it, it and it lasts until I get to Disney, and then I realize, okay, I didn't need that anyway, or something to that extent. I yeah. don't know what it is, and I've been doing Disney trips for decades, and I still feel overwhelmed sometimes by that. So I, you know what, to our listeners, you're not alone. Trust <laughs> I mean, D- Danny, as I said, Danny makes it look like he's cool as a cucumber. I totally get it. I envy my brother over there on the other side of the screen. I am not that way. I, I am really not that way. I mean, it's it's literally funny you said that. Well, I had to do something for a mortgage. I had to take a class to save a couple percent. Of it. You had to take so, a class. If you want, you can. It's a two hour class online. It's a test essentially. Okay, and you can save a quarter percent. Oh heck yeah! So, yeah, I mean, it's, heck yeah, it was right. So. Leading up to it, and this is, and my mom said it perfectly, and it's so true. Leading up to that, leading up to a trip, I do stress a little bit. I'm like, oh, I gotta remember this, gotta remember that. 
that 48 hour window where usually people are lose their marbles. I'm like, yeah, we got this. Don't worry about it. Literally, my mom was sick to her stomach because she was like, oh my God, is he going to get the mortgage in? Is everything going to fall into play? And my mom walked in my room. I got my feet up on my side desk. I'm just typing away. I got a drink in my hand. She goes, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm taking the test, you know, just hanging. Just cool as a cute. You know what it is? If you stress, you're just going to forget more. That's it. You know what? I'm learning that. But you know, I have to. I have to say something though. It's not just Disney trips. I do the same thing with business trips. I really yeah. do. You know, you got that business would freak me out a little bit because indie Disney meet. I think that's the most I stress is the indie Disney meet, just because there's more moving pieces. And once again, if you forget something major, like if I forget my mic, could we do it without it? Sure. At the end of the day, I I could I go buy a new mic? Sure. But then the day you're not going to, and you're just out there. No, you just don't have that safety net. That's the thing. Yeah. Safety net. Well, I'll tell you what, Danny. Um, take- we're going to go ahead and take away. We got a couple of announcements right after this. You heard the show, and we hope you want more. Well, feel free to join us over at our social media platforms. Instagram and our Facebook page can be found at Behind the Ears Podcast. Our webpage is BehindTheEarsPodcast.net, and our email is BehindTheEarsPodcast at gmail.com. And our Twitter handle is at BehindTheEarsPC. And come and join the conversation about all things Disney over at the WDW Community page. Don't forget to rate and review the show over at iTunes or Apple Podcasts as it really helps us get the word out about the show. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes or Apple Podcasts or the Podbean app. Also, you can listen to us on Stitcher Radio, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, and via Alexa and Google Home. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Behind the News Podcast. I am Uncle Danny. That was Mr. Chris. And once again, you can always, if you're new to the show, you can always catch us live every Tuesday and Thursday on YouTube and Facebook at 9.45 p.m. Eastern. I do want to say uh, thank you once again to Chris for giving me the shout out today. And also everybody who PM'd me, text me, Facebook, Instagram, the whole nine yards, wishing me a happy birthday. Uh, Last one before I hit 30, so let's see next year. Uh, but uh, I do appreciate it. Um, yeah, I view birthdays as another day, but it, it is nice to see all the love that you know Chris and myself get from this silly little podcast that we do. Um, if you're going to be in Disney next week, and depending on when you're listening to this show, those dates would be March 24th through March 31st. Uh, if you're going to be in the parks... Hit us up on Facebook. I'll be there. Um, you know, send us. You can send the show private message, whatever the case is, and see what we're going and doing. Um, you know, me, Nick, Jess, Lindsay. So, you know, want to jump on a ride, grab a drink, let us know. And uh, so, once again, thank you again. Hope to see some of you down there. Some of those locals. Looking forward to getting together. I know a couple other podcasters are going to be down towards the tail end, so I look forward to seeing them and uh, definitely uh, filming some good content and. Uh, we got some big things coming up for the show that we're super excited about. Some things that I hope to be able to get a little more cemented while I'm down there. So, uh, you know, look forward to doing more work with everybody and uh, keep bringing you the best show we could possibly bring you. So with that being said, I am signing off for a week, people. The next two shows I might be on. I might not be on. Depends on the service in Disney World. With that being said, everybody. Tuck your kids in tight, wear your seatbelts, and have a safe and wonderful week. And I am Uncle Danny. Until next time. And I'm Mr. Chris. Thanks a lot, everybody, for joining us. Had a wonderful conversation today. Thanks for all the interaction. And just thanks for everything that you do for us by passing on the word about the show and and just making this the best interactive podcast that could possibly be. Thank you so much for that. Well, I'll tell you what. Until we meet again, I hope everybody has an absolutely magical day. Take care.